Good morning, good morning, guys. I was going to um, type out this blog for um, this morning post uh, from the Kingdom Keys series. We were looking at part three, but after I reviewed my notes for for Revelation chapter 20, saw that there were 11 and a half pages of notes. <laughs> that would have ended up to be a pretty long blog that would have needed to be broken down into several blog parts. And I didn't want to do that. So I felt the easiest way to do this particular blog is maybe to only type out certain highlighted points, but then give your audio recording to listen to um, this part three uh, blog for Kingdom Keys. And this particular part is getting into the part of the, the chapters that you guys have been really waiting for me to cover since October of last year, but God didn't give me the release to do so <clears throat> until recently, the last two blogs, which I didn't realize that the last, uh, uh, initially when I did the first blog on Kingdom Keys, it was really going to be tied into the uh, chapters that y'all have been waiting for me so patiently to cover, which is Revelations 20 and 21. Now, there is a lot of content there. I'm not going to be able to cover them all. I'm only going to highlight the parts in my notes for from both chapters as we cover them in uh, different blog posts, Revelation 20 and Revelation 21, um, that I felt Holy Spirit had highlighted to me. Um, so there may be some content that you may have uh, discovering your reading that I'm not highlighting because it was not the focus that God had given me to focus on. All right, so let's get into um, the content from Revelation chapter 20. And my notes started when I started taking notes um, on this particular tap chapter. It was September 23rd of last year. And like I said, I ended up with 11 and a half pages. So to make this a little easier for me, um, I'm going to be pretty much reading from my notes directly, but I'm going to try not to sound like I'm reading. Um, and then if God give me some sidebars or thought provoking thoughts additional to what I already have written to share with you guys, then um, I will share those thoughts as well. All right. So again, this is part three of the Kingdom Keys series. And this part of the Kingdom Keys series is called All Things Made New. And it's taken from Revelation chapter 20. So let's start with the introduction. Now, there is a lot we can pull and learn from these three chapters of the Bible these last three chapters of the Bible. There were so many different directions I could have gone from reading these last four chapters of Revelation. But it's always my goal to not only hear the voice of Holy Spirit, but to follow his lead. Just on chapter 20 of Revelation, I ended up with 11 and a half pages of notes from these 15 short verses. And here's what I was prompt to share with you today. So now we're going to get into summarizing of Revelations chapter 20. Now, Revelation chapter 20 focuses on the coming judgment upon mankind, Satan, and all his alliances. One, those who submit to his authority, meaning Satan's authority, by refusing to repent and accepting Christ's saving grace, what he did for all of us at the cross. This will include both the natural world, what is seen, and the invisible realm or spiritual world. This is the Lord's final judgment Marking the end of human history as we know it. And we see this in verses 11 
through 15 of Revelation chapter 20. No longer will Satan and his hordes be allowed to deceive the nations, which is the world and mankind. The final insurrection has come to an end and God will not allow any further interruption to impede his original plans for the heaven and the earth or mankind. All things will be made new. Therefore, God will administrate or pour out his wrath and final judgment upon Satan. And we see this in verse 10 of Revelation chapter 20. This final judgment will also be extended to all of Satan's alliances. And you can compare that to Revelation chapter 19 verses 17 through 20 and Revelation 20 verse 14. This will also include all those who are spiritual dead, those who refuse to believe in and accept Christ as their savior. They refuse to repent of their sins. And we see this at Revelation chapter 20 verses 12 and 15. Now here's a sidebar thought. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 7, verses 7 through 9, we read how many people will choose to follow Satan. Now you can compare that to Matthew's chapter 7, verse 13, where it says, Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who will go in by it. Many, the scripture says. Many Christians and non-believers will choose to side with Satan and not Christ in the spiritual war that has been looming since the beginning of human history. So how do we know which path we have actually chosen in the spiritual realm? Which road are we actually walking on? Well, God does not leave us uninformed or blind to anything. In fact, we can use this as our checkoff list. If we can check off any of these, and I'm talking about practices, things we do on a regular basis, habitually do on a regular basis. You may even feel guilty about doing these things once you have done them. You can even repent. But if you refuse to take the appropriate steps or actions to change any of these things in your life, they are rooted in your life to the point where you are not getting rid of them. Then you are practicing such things and therefore are on the broad and spacious road we are warned to avoid. So we're going to look at two scriptures which will provide us a clear list of habits that will sentence us to be judged by God on judgment. Now here's a thought-provoking point to consider. Judgment Day is for all those whose name has not been written in the book of life. Christians who meet God's righteous standards have sincerely repent of all sin and forgiven everyone that they need to forgive and accept Christ, their Savior, will escape, be exempt from this coming judgment day. And that's the end of the thought-provoking uh, thought. So we're getting back into the actual blog part of my notes. So here... We're going to look at Galatians chapter 5, verse starting with verse 19 through 21. So when we look at Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21, which talks about the practicing of the works of the flesh, there's a list of things 
that we need to look at. And I didn't quote the scripture per se. I'm paraphrasing the different points that are made here. Now, these are indicators, practices, things that are rooted in us that regardless if we repent or not, but we still habitually we uh, participating these things, then there we're probably on the broad and spacious road that God has prompted us in Matthew chapter seven, verse thirteen to avoid. And here's what Galatians chapter five, verses nineteen uh, through twenty-one brings out: one, all forms of sexual sins, which includes adultery, sex with someone who is not your spouse, fornication. Sex with anyone, with self, or anything when you are not married. And when I say sex with self, that could be masturbation or other toys that people may use to arouse and to gain, to gain an orgasm for themselves. Also, we need to include bestiality, homosexuality, incest, sex with someone you are closely related to. Sexual abuse of any kind, rape, etc. All right. The second one listed in that list is pagan worship, religion, alliances, praises, acceptance of any kind. This world, this would be aligning oneself with any traditions, rituals, customs, celebrations, which include holidays, attach to any foreign gods. Do your research. It is so important that you do your research from a biblical as well as a historical standpoint. The world of science and history is a form of science aligns with the scriptures. So do your research, do your due diligence and do your research. Do not let your pride cause you to be rejected by God. Because we're allowing, remember, Galatians chapter 5 verses 19, 21 talks about the works of the flesh. Things that are pleasing to our flesh. And therefore we align ourselves to things, customs, habits, traditions, Appetites because they are pleasing to our flesh, but they're not acceptable to God. So do your research. Three, uncontrollable temper. This includes, but not limited to hatred, contention, and contention is like purposely and encouraging people into debates or arguments, being competitive, creating strife. Being confrontational for the purpose of leading others into a discussion that will create debates. Other temperamental behavior include jealousy, a serious excess or dysfunctional quality in the church. I'm referring to jealousy being a serious excess of and dysfunctional quality in the church. Along with outbursts of wrath, self ambitions, which is a lack of unity. Dis- dissension, which is conflict, disharmony, disunity, and fighting. Heresy, adherence, which is adherence to a religious opinion contrary to the church doctrine. For example, someone who have taken issue with such, ch- uh, such church doctrine as the Trinity or the rapture because they cannot find the actual exact word in the scriptures. And yet they create debates over this issue because they can't find the word. We're n- we are talking about Bible truths, right? So, and then there is also envy. Now, envy is to display resentment toward or a form of jealousy. It is also the ill will at someone or displeasure, displeasure toward in order to cause injury or insult. Which can be like murder. The last of the temperament behavior of sin, which you you purposely kill a person. This does not also have to be physical. It can also be spiritually, their reputation, etc. 
The last in this list of our sins of drunkenness and robberies. And that can include noisy parties. All right. So now, if we turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we look at verses 9 through 13, uh, it, it repeats some of the same items listed uh, in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. So I won't repeat those. So let's include on our list uh, anything these verses mention that is not stated in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. So when we back up to verse 6, it says, do you not know? So let's pause right there for a second. Because the fact that it makes that statement, do you not know, is indicating that you should be aware of this. What it's about to say, you should be very aware. So he goes on to say, do you not know that a, a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Let's stop there for a, get, for a second. So let's drop down to verse 9 through 13, which addresses in more people by giving, uh, by giving the following warning to all of us. Verse 9 states that we're not to keep company with sexual immoral people. And then in verse 10, Paul makes his statement that he just made about not keeping company with immoral people more clear. Because he indicates he's not talking about people in the world. But he's talking about people that are a part of the church that call themselves Christians. Then in verse 11, Paul states here, just in case we miss his point, that he, he wants to make it very clear for us that anyone name a brother. And as I mentioned again, anyone who is a Christian. So we need to add to our list, number five, covenants. Anyone who desires wealth, craving possessions. And then number six would be an extortioner, which is overcharging for goods or services. Free seeing God's people um, cheating a swingler. And then the last one is an out auditor. Um, forgive me the mispronouncing of that word. I always mispronounce that word incorrectly, but I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Giving worship to anyone or any other thing other than God. And then finally, a reviver, someone who speaks abusively. Now, so now, although we are supposed to keep from people who practice such things, we have to be mindful that Paul is speaking to and about members in the church, not those who are outside of the church. Remember when we were looking at Revelation chapter 20 verses uh, 10 through 15. Well, we're covering 11 through 15, but I want to back up to verse 10. And partly quoting verse 10, it says, the devil deceived them. Meaning them would be some, many, I should say, that are in the church, God's people. Many will sincerely submit to Satan. Some only, and others not. They will be deceived by his coming just like Adam. You know, Adam was God's. Man, God's servant, God's son, perfect. And yet still he was deceived. He allowed himself to be deceived, tricked by Satan in protecting, of course, Eve. But that's another story for another time. But this deception that Satan pulls off against God's people, this is the final de uh, deception employed by Satan. It is the last inter insurrection God will, it, it is the last insurrection God will tolerate. So if we look at, so if we look at verses 15, I mean, verses 11 through 15 in that chapter, we see that mankind history would finally end. And we're talking about as we know it today. And the only thing left at that point is the final judgment. The judgment of all who choose to believe in Christ. 
The book of life is open, revealing everyone whose name did not appear in the book. This include all men and women from the beginning of human history. This brings us to the conclusion of Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 through 15. We see through John's vision, the close of human history as we know it. The mammalian age ends and the final judgment is executed, which exclude, which excludes God's remnant, the real ecclesia. Then the book of life is open and all names who does not appear in it is revealed. Again, this leads us to the promise that was lost in the book of Genesis by Adam. We will discover this in the next part of this series series and hopefully we'll release that next week um <clears throat> a new heaven and a new earth reveal taken from revelations chapter 21 which is the next one we recovered until then take another look at the list we uh reviewed earlier um take it from galatians chapter 5 verse 19 through 21 and first corinthians chapter 5 verses 9 through 13 if you check any of the boxes, as you look at those item lists, there are these character flaws lists. And we're talking about things that you habitually do. It's rooted in you. You, you would do them, repent, but you go back to the same vomit. We're talking about that kind of stuff. So you make that list. And if you check off any that you are practicing, then there is still time. To make needed changes. Praise Jah. So next week, hopefully, we'll go into not just the judgment, but the blessing of God in Revelation chapter 21. You alone deserve my worship. And you alone deserve my praise you alone deserve the honor Lord. so we lift your name high so we lift your name high